If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to determine whether these given vectors are orthogonal, parallel, or neither, we can take advantage of a couple of strategies. So let's take a look at those first. So we know that two vectors, a and b, will be orthogonal, which of course means that they're perpendicular, if and only if the dot product between those two vectors is equal to zero. And in a moment we will talk about how to compute a dot product. On the other hand, if we're trying to determine if the vectors are parallel, then we can take advantage of this definition of the dot product. And what we'll do is find the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes of the vectors, which we will again talk about, and then we can determine the angle between them. And if that angle turns out to be either 0 degrees or 180 degrees, then we can confidently state that the two vectors are parallel. So we'll use the first definition to determine if they are orthogonal or perpendicular, and then we'll use the second concept to determine whether they're parallel. Now, in the second concept, we have to calculate the magnitudes of vectors a and b, and in order to calculate the magnitude of a vector, we take advantage of the equation given down below, where we basically take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the vector, and luckily we can clearly see the components of the vector when they are written in com component form or in unit vector form. So with that brief overview, let's take a look at the two vectors presented in part A. And we're going to first try to determine if they are orthogonal by taking the dot product of those two vectors. Now here's one way to calculate the dot product between two vectors. We simply multiply their respective components and then sum those results. So for vectors A and B, we can see that we have the X and Y components of those two vectors. And so we'll go ahead and calculate the dot product. So for vector A, the x component is 9, and for vector B, the x component is negative 2. Vector A has a y component of 3, and vector B has a y component of 6. And then neither vector have any z components, so this is essentially 0. So we're going to end up with negative 18 plus 18, which of course is 0, and as stated by the first theorem, if the dot product between those two vectors is equal to zero, then indeed they are orthogonal. So for part A, we can definitely say that these vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular. We will now move on to the vectors presented in part B and once again compute the dot product. Notice this time the vectors will have x, y, and z components. So let's set up that dot product over here. So we've filled in the x, y, and z components for both vectors. You might want to pause the video and just make sure that the numbers make sense to you. Again, they were coming from the vectors in part b. And if we compute this, we get a value of negative 3, which of course is not equal to 0. So the vectors of part b are not orthogonal to each other, which might mean that they are parallel. And that's what we're going to investigate next by calculating the angle between those two vectors using this formula right here. Now in that formula, we do have the dot product between a and b, which we just determined was negative 3. But what we also have to figure out are the magnitudes of vectors a and b. And once again, to find the magnitude of a vector, we can simply calculate that according to this equation right here. So we'll square the components, we'll sum them, and then take the square root. Let's show an example calculation and find the magnitude of a vector a. And this is still in part b of the question. So we're going to take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we're going to have 4 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 2 squared. And when we work that out, we get the square root of 45. And if we wish, we can simplify that, of course, by rewriting it as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 9 is 3. So we have 3 square root of 5. And that will be the magnitude of vector a. Let's set up a similar calculation to find the magnitude of vector b. So we've entered in the components of vector b into the magnitude equation, and when we compute that, we end up with the square root of 35. So now that we have the magnitude of vector b and the magnitude of vector a, as well as the dot product between those two vectors, we can go ahead and plug in to the equation to find this angle. So let's plug in that dot product and then the two magnitudes. So we've plugged in the information. In the denominator, we'll have to multiply 3 root 5 and root 35. So we would end up with 3 times the square root of 175. And 
the square root of 175, that can be written as the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. And that's convenient because that reduces to 5 square root 7. So we'll replace the square root of 175 with 5 root 7. The 3's can cancel, and that's going to leave us with negative 1 over 5 root 7. And then finally, to find theta, we can take the inverse cosine of this value right here, and that's going to give us the angle. And just make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And we end up with roughly 94 degrees. And we can see that, of course, 94 degrees is not 0, nor is it 180. And so these vectors are not parallel. And so the only conclusion for part B, since they were not orthogonal, nor were they parallel, is that these vectors are neither. And so that will be the correct answer for part B. We'll move to part C, and the vectors are written in a different form. It's called unit vector form, but of course, we still have the components of the vectors. So for vector A, the x component is negative 8, the y component is 12, and the z component is 4, and then the same idea applies to vector B for the x, y, and z components. So we'll find the dot product first, and for that we're going to once again follow this equation. So we'll multiply the components and then see if they sum up to zero. And in this case they certainly do not, so the vectors in part C of the question are not orthogonal. We'll have to move on to the second equation here to determine the angle between the vectors. And so why don't we find the magnitudes just like we did before, obeying this equation here. And we end up with the square root of 224, which can be split up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 14, and that becomes 4 square root of 14. So that's the magnitude of vector A. Let's find the magnitude of vector B next. And there we end up with the square root of 126, which is equivalent to the square root of 9 times the square root of 14, which gives us 3 square root of 14. So now we have the magnitude of vector B, that of vector A, and the dot product. So let's plug them into the formula given here. Now if we take a look in the denominator, when we multiply the radicals, we're going to have 4 times 3, which is 12, of course. Now radical 14 times radical 14 is just 14. And 12 times 14 is exactly 168. So we're going to have negative 168 on the top and 168 on the bottom. This gives us negative 1. And of course the cosine function is equal to negative 1 when theta is equal to 180 degrees. And so we can see from the second theorem or the second formula that when that angle is 180 degrees, the two vectors are indeed parallel. So the correct answer for part C is that the vectors are indeed parallel. Let's set up the dot product for the vectors presented in part D, and we'll first see if they're going to be orthogonal. And so there are the components being multiplied together and then summed. Notice that for the y component of vector A, there was a negative 1 here. When we work this out, we do indeed get 0. And since the dot product of the vectors in part D is equal to 0, we can confidently conclude that those vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular to one another. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and then subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. You're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.